all of us experience disappointments in life. Dr. Ray Pritchard states it this way, friends break their word, marriages end in divorce, our children move away and never call us, colleagues betray us, a company lays us off, doctors can't cure us, our investments disappear, our dreams are shattered, the best laid plans go astray, other Christians disappoint us, and very often we disappoint ourselves. We live in a world of disappointment, and if we do not come to grips with this truth, we are doomed to be unhappier tomorrow than we are today. <laughs> Sounds real encouraging, doesn't it? <laughs> but when you think about it, there really is truth in what he writes. In fact, Dr. Jerome Frank at John Hopkins University in Baltimore points out this fact that we all make certain assumptions about life, even if they are unstated. Deep down, we believe that if we do certain things, then others will treat us or respond in a certain way. And he refers to that as our assumptive world. We assume that we have earned certain things out of life, and if those expectations are not met, then we're disappointed. Think about it visually we have our expectations so if your expectation is here and then the reality that you experience is here then that gap in between is disappointment your expectations were not met and you can't always just lower your expectations because sometimes if you lower your expectations you might have a little less disappointment but if you lower your expectations sometimes the reality can be even lower but the the truth is we have to take a look at why the disappointment has come and most importantly what are we going to do about it so that's what I'd like for us to consider today is just where do you go with your disappointment and what do you do with it even worshipers of God followers of Jesus can fall into this mindset if we're not careful when things don't go our way we get disappointed we get discouraged maybe we even feel like giving up but that is not what God wants us to do so the first place that we have to go with our disappointment is we need to deal with it where we feel it and that's inwardly inside the very definition of disappointment is a feeling of sadness or displeasure again it's a feeling it's an emotion a feeling of sadness or displeasure caused by the non-fulfillment of one, one's hopes or expectations. Some synonyms for the word disappointment you see on the screen, regret, dismay, sorrow, let down, washout. Boy, I can relate to that. Sometimes you, you expect something to happen and it's just a washout. And then the other one I think is pretty descriptive non-event did you ever have something that you expect to happen and it just didn't happen it became a non-event and man that's that can be a real disappointment well we can certainly get disappointed with ourselves for something that we did wrong or something that we did not do well sometimes we get disappointed with ourselves for trusting in someone else in a way that maybe we shouldn't have because if they didn't meet our expectation we could blame them, of course, but we could also kind of blame ourselves for saying, how could I have been so silly to have put my trust in that person for that particular thing? And here's the key. If we leave our disappointment within ourselves, if that's the only place we go with it, then we run the risk of becoming bitter and disillusioned. And we begin to focus on either maybe blaming ourselves or blaming someone else or maybe even blaming God. Here's what one of God's prophets, Micah, wrote. Listen to the tone of this, and it's on the screen for you, but it's in Micah chapter 7, verses 1 through 6. What misery is mine, or literally, oh, woe is me, he writes. The godly have been swept from the land. Not one upright man remains. All men lie in wait to shed blood. Each hunts his brother with a net. Both hands are skilled in doing evil. The ruler demands gifts, the judge accepts bribes, 
The powerful dictate what they desire. They all conspire together. The best of them is like a briar. The most upright worse than a thorn hedge. The day of your watchman has come. The day God visits you. Now is the time of their confusion. Do not trust a neighbor. Put no confidence in a friend. Even with her who lies in your embrace, be careful of your words. For a son dishonors his father. A daughter rises up against her mother. A daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the members of his own household. Sounds like Mike has been watching headline news in America today, right? <laughs> But listen to all the things that he had become discouraged and disillusioned about and disappointed in. Covers every facet, the political leaders, the attitude of the day, family relationships, relationships with others in the nation of Israel. And yes, he was speaking as a prophet of God. And yes, he was feeling the disappointment there, but he was also expressing a disappointment of God. Because God had commanded his people to follow him, to trust him, and they had become disillusioned because things had not perhaps gone the way that they thought that it should, that God had not responded maybe to them or done things for them in the way that they thought that God should do. And so they began to take their disappointment instead of taking it back to God and taking the steps that they needed to do to get over their disappointment and realign themselves with God, they sought uh, to find relief away from God in some other place or in some other way. So the first thing we need to do, again, dealing with our disappointment inwardly, is we need to be honest about our feelings and acknowledge them. What adjustments do you need to make? Maybe in some cases with some people you do need to lower your expectations a little bit or at least to modify them. But if you do that, you need to have a conversation with that individual. You need to look at was the disappointment a an issue of misplacing my expectation with that person was it a miscommunication with that person maybe i didn't make myself clear um maybe it was some kind of misunderstanding i thought i'd communicated well but they didn't hear it and they misunderstood what i was saying but we need to really take a look at that inwardly first before we do anything else with it, whether it's approaching another person. But certainly what we need to do is to be willing as we're looking inward to also look upward. Because disappointment, if we don't handle it right, and it does cause us to become bitter, that bitterness can begin to make us lethargic and slow to begin to do the duties of life. We start finding excuses, um, not to do the things that we know we ought to do. And little by little, things begin to slide. Jobs don't get done, chores aren't finished, projects are left uncompleted, phone calls aren't returned, messages are not answered, appointments are not met, papers are not written, goals aren't achieved. And slowly, little by little, we begin to slide down into a bottomless pit of despair. And so that's why as we look inwardly, we also have to look upwardly. Even if we feel like our disappointment is with God or somehow we're thinking that, that God has caused this. Again, I love the honesty of the scriptures. In both Old Testament and New Testament, we see various individuals, great individuals of faith in God who struggled with disappointment. And they express that in what is written in the scriptures. Or recorded about them in the scriptures. The writer of Psalm 43 in the Old Testament penned these words. You are God my stronghold. Why have you rejected me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? So whatever this individual was going through, there was disappointment there, obviously, not only with their circumstance or situation in life, but they really were kind of aiming it at God and saying, God, I don't understand. I've tried to follow you. You're my stronghold. And yet, do you see this assumptive world that we live in? I'm assuming that because I've done certain things, then you're going to respond to me in a certain way. But he is God and we are not. And he knows things that we cannot see and he's working in areas in our life in ways that we cannot imagine. 
And God has taught us time and time again that he allows trials and difficulties to come into our life to shape us, to help us to trust him, to mold us, to strengthen us in ways that we would never be strengthened or matured had he just taken it easy on us. And this is where we have to trust the wisdom of God. So the psalmist writes these things, you are, my, you are God, my stronghold, why have you rejected me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? But then look at what the psalmist says, send forth your light and your truth. Let them guide me. And that's the key. God has given us his word, his principles to live by, that even when we feel disappointed by others or we've disappointed ourselves or we feel disappointed with God, we have the light of his word that we can cling to and follow little by little, step by step, and we'll find guidance through our disappointments in life. And that's why the psalmist also writes there in Psalm 43, why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. And there's a phrase that's in the Bible several times, and it says, it came to pass. And obviously that's talking about after a period of time, but I love that phraseology because whatever you're going through in life right now, you're experiencing it, but it will pass. It came to pass. And so if you're going through good times right now, don't get too caught up in the good times because don't want to burst your bubble, but there's going to be challenges down the road. Enjoy the good times now, but don't get so blinded by it that you're not prepared when the disappointments and challenges of life will come in the future because they will. And that's what God wants us to learn to trust him through all those difficulties and disappointments of life. He is still right there to help us and to guide us through. And if you're going through a difficult time right now and you're saying, Lord, how long is this going to go on know that it came to pass it's here now but it will pass there is a brighter future if you will continue to trust God the key is to take your disappointment look at it be honest about it inwardly but then also make sure that you're giving it upwardly to God don't let your disappointment keep you from doing what you know you have to do or you should do even sometimes when you don't feel like doing it. John Maxwell says the smallest act of obedience is better than the greatest intention. Hear that again. The smallest act of obedience is better than the greatest intention. And I believe he's right. Because if we cannot obey God in a big way, or if you feel like right now you're at a point where you can't obey God in some big way, then obey him in a small way. Start with a little thing. Do what you know needs to be done, something simple that God says in his word that we ought to do, and do it for the glory of God. And if you can't follow God's big plan right now, or you don't know what the big plan is, then follow his small plan. If you don't know what the next 10 steps are, then take the next two or three steps, or maybe just take the next step that's right in front of you. I can tell you as your pastor and as a brother in Christ and just as a friend, even years as I pastored this church, there have been some days when it's like I knew so clear what God wanted, not only for that day, but for, for the next month and for the next year. And then there's other times I've gotten up and I've said, Lord, I don't have a clue. <laughs> I, I don't have a clue and I'm the pastor of the church and you know I'm feeling all this pressure and all this responsibility. But you know what? My feet hit the floor and I asked God to give me direction through the day and I just sought to be faithful for that day doing what I knew I needed to do be faithful in the little things and in time whether it was a week later or a month later or sometimes a year later God began to make it clear once again and it's not that it all falls on me or it all falls on you we're in this together that's why we need each other we're a family God works through every single one of us. And even though we get disappointed with each other from time to time, we also can be encouraged by one another greatly. And that's what God wants us to remember. If you expect perfection, then your whole life is going to be a series of disappointments and complaining because we are imperfect people. But if we will learn to be obedient in the little things... Who knows, maybe your willingness to 
be obedient consistently in the little things may over time actually change the way things are in a big way. So again, it's better to begin small with God than to not begin at all. That's one of the things I just want you to think about when if you're going through a time of disappointment right now and you feel like you just want to throw up your hands, it's better to begin small with God. You don't have to take the greatest step, just, just a, a little one. But trust God and take that step and see what he does. Micah, who was so skeptical and disappointed, I read those first verses there a moment ago. This is how he finishes up that little section that sounds uh, so, uh, so negative. In Micah 7, verses 8 through 10, he writes this, Do not rejoice over me, my enemy. When I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. Here Micah understood that even though he was disappointed with everybody else, and he was even somewhat disappointed with God, it seemed at times, and he didn't really understand, he still knew that he had to trust God through it all, and so that gave him that determination to just in the little ways keep being faithful, keep trusting God. And he knew, when I stumble and fall, when I disappoint others, when I disappoint God, I'm going to get up again. I'm going to take that step. I'm not going to give up. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. And then he says, I will bear the indignation of the Lord. I know, I, you know, people are going to be critical of me for my faith because I'm not a perfect person. And he even says this here, because I have sinned against him. Micah understood his own sin and the disappointments. How about you today? You know, sometimes we... We get to points in our life where we're following Jesus and we think we're doing pretty good. And when we think we're doing pretty good, we kind of start looking around and we see others that aren't doing so good. And then we begin to kind of get a little bit of an attitude. Well, you know, they just need to straighten up and, you know, do better, do what I'm doing. And if we're not careful before long, that pride slips into our life in subtle ways. And it's not long before we've messed up again. So we need to make sure that we're staying humble before the Lord and trusting him. And look at, here at what Micah says. I love this because this is also giving a picture of Jesus Christ. Long before Christ ever walked to the earth, Micah understood this principle of God's mercy and forgiveness, but also the fact that we're guilty of sin and we need somebody to come in and to mediate on our behalf. And so we see here this picture of a mediator. I've sinned against him, and then look at what he says, until he pleads my case and executes justice for me. This is not only pleading case between uh, Micah and his enemies, but also, I believe, even in where he feels like he's failed in his relationship with God. He will bring me forth to light, and I will see his righteousness. Notice Micah there puts the emphasis not on his own righteousness, but on God's righteousness. I know that in all the disappointments of life, I've got to keep looking upward. I look inward, but I also look upward, and I'm trusting God. So we need to give our disappointments over to God as we look inward and upward, but then we start to need to take our disappointments outward. We need to look outwardly to see where he is working and what he wants us to do. And here's something I just want you to think about. God provides appointments for your disappointments. We get disappointed when something we expect to happen doesn't happen, but when those things happen, we need to begin to become aware that maybe that thing didn't happen or that expectation wasn't met because God has a different thing that he's about to do or something he wants you to learn. He's got an appointment for you. And sometimes we can get so focused on our disappointments that we miss the appointment that is right there before us. Maybe we don't see it immediately. Maybe God doesn't have it in the plan immediately, but he's got it laid out here in the future, whether it's near or in the distant future. We might call them opportunities. You know, we've heard that familiar phrase when, when God shuts one door, he opens another door. Well, that's kind of this principle biblically here that I'm speaking of. When you experience a disappointment, 
deal with it, look inwardly, upwardly, but also begin to look outwardly and look for ways that God is providing an, a, another appointment for you. An appointment, literally, the definition you can see is an agreement to meet with someone at a particular time. It also means a job, a duty, or position that's given to someone. So when you face a disappointment, just know that God has given you another appointment and he wants to help you to work through it. Here's the mistake many of us make. Instead of looking outward and upward and being honest with ourselves and looking for those appointments that God gives us, we want to form our own appointment. I'll handle it my way. So we handle our disappointments by turning to things that aren't God's appointments. Maybe it's a relationship with someone that God doesn't want you to have. He did not appoint that for you. Maybe it's turning to some substance, whether it's alcohol or drugs or whatever. Maybe it's just burying yourself in your work or isolating yourself. Maybe it's getting fed up because, you know, I'm sick of that pastor at the church and I'm sick of those people and he's let me down and they've let me down so I don't want anything to do with them anymore and you find your appointment out in the world and that's that's your prerogative but maybe in doing that you've missed the appointment that God has for you God works through people even though they disappoint us people who are obedient to his word and his will in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5, uh, 5 through 7, here's what the Apostle Paul writes. And the Apostle Paul experienced many disappointments in life when we read in the New Testament. And listen to what he writes here, though, because God was able to look around and to see the appointment that God had for him in providing someone else. Even though he was disappointed by some, God used somebody else in the church to encourage him. For when we came into Macedonia, we had no rest, but we were harassed at every turn, conflicts on the outside and fears within. But God who comforts the downcast, you might even say they're the disappointed, but God who comforts the downcast comforted us by the coming of Titus. There it is. Paul could have focused on everybody in the church that had let him down and other believers. There were people that had deserted him, people he needed help from, that he expected to get help from, didn't get that financial support or uh, that response, that encouragement that he thought he might get. But rather than being discouraged about all that, he saw the appointment that God had for him in his disappointment, and it came through the person of Titus. So one of the ways that you and I can also handle our disappointment is to look out and see is there somebody else that is also going through a time of disappointment in their life because you're not the only one and what can I do to help them with their disappointment give of yourself to help others through their time of disappointment the Apostle Paul also writes this in Philippians chapter 4 verses 14 through 20 and he puts it this way writing to the church at Philippi because this is what they did. The church at Philippi was going through a difficult time and yet they learned what it was like to even in their own challenges of life to still reach out and minister to other people. Nevertheless, he writes, you have done well that you shared in my distress. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving but only you. So here again, can you hear that? There's a little bit of disappointment there in Paul's writing. He, he had some expectations and the other churches didn't meet it, but yet, because of the faithfulness of the people at Philippi in their giving, he was encouraged. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and abound, I'm full, having received from Epaphroditus the things that you sent me, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. He was encouraged uh, through uh, the disappointments they had had. He sees this appointment that was given to him by the, the gift and the blessing through the Philippian church. And then here's the response also. When we're faithful in the little things and when we give and we don't let disappointment uh, stop us from doing what we know we ought to do, and we give of ourselves, look at what Paul writes here, and my God 
shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Just three simple things today to remember if you are going through a time of disappointment or when you go through a time of disappointment. Be honest about your feelings. Look inwardly. But as you look inwardly and see what adjustments need to be made, make sure that you're looking upwardly. And then as you look upwardly and you're honest with God, keep trusting him. Be faithful in the little things. Don't let your disappointment become disillusionment and bitterness. Don't get sliding on that downward track, but keep trusting God. And then look outwardly. Look for those appointments that God is giving you, those opportunities to minister to somebody else in their time of disappointment or to look for ways that God is giving help to you in maybe ways that you never realized before. Uh, to wrap this message up, I wanted to give you an opportunity to have just a, an actual action point here. There's many ways that you can respond to this message, not only with just the meditation and the thinking, but also some action steps of looking around and saying, what can I do to help somebody else who's going through a rough time? We do many ministries here, blessings in a backpack ministry, uh, help through the Belpre area ministries. We have volunteers that serve there. We have some volunteers that help with the Salvation Army. Of course, our ministries that go on here on a weekly basis. But Kim Wiseman's gonna come up right now and Kim is going to talk to us about an opportunity that we have and something that we've been doing for some time now with the Latrobe Street Mission. And certainly these people are going through a time of disappointment and hardship in their life. So Kim, if you'll come and share and then we're going to close. Good morning, everyone. Um, as Pastor Mark said, my name is Kim Wiseman, and I'd like to talk to you about the Latrobe Street Mission. Uh, the mission is a homeless mission. It's located in Parkersburg, and they opened their doors in December 2012. Porterfield has been partnering with the mission since they opened. We're responsible for serving a dinner there once a month. As the Latrobe Street Mission Coordinator for Porterfield, it is my responsibility to see that we have a prepared meal and people to serve that meal on the fourth Thursday of every month. I try to keep the menu simple. Um, for example, sloppy joes and macaroni and cheese, chili and with peanut butter sandwiches or cornbread, goulash or poor man's lasagna served with garlic bread, chicken and noodles served with rolls. We always serve a vegetable with a dinner along with dessert and drinks. This summer we even served breakfast for dinner um, on a couple different occasions and the people there absolutely loved it and asked that we do it more. Um, we serve sausage gravy and biscuits, scrambled eggs and hash browns and the other time we did a breakfast bake and we served hash browns and cinnamon rolls for dessert. The in-house population for Latrobe varies from month to month. We've served as few as 25 or 30 to as many as 80 or 85. The past few months, we've had a steady population of about 30 to 35, but now that the weather's turning cooler, that will most likely increase. Some of you may be wondering how you can help and we really need volunteers who can help cook or prepare a meal, a very simple dish, and those who can come and help serve it, or even do both. We have some that do that. Even if you aren't a good cook, you can still help by picking up buns or garlic bread or drinks, baking a batch of brownies or cookies, picking up a vegetable tray or throwing together a crock pot of green beans or corn, it just depends on the menu for that month. We've even had a couple of life groups take a turn um, preparing the meal as well as our youth. We would love to have more life groups get involved as well as the Sunday school classes here. Anyone and everyone is welcome to help out. If you're interested in learning more or you'd like some more information, I will be at the back at the mission kiosk um, you can sign up or you can speak to me about helping. Thank you.
ask him. So I always like to give you an opportunity in a specific way to put the message into practice. And again, this is only once a month, right, Kim? Just basically one day a month, that one particular week, that one night. So this is a great opportunity for those of you that don't want to make like a big commitment or you're saying, well, gee, I, I, you know, I, don't, I don't have a lot of time. So, wow, if you could just help out with one little piece of that just once a month for one day, uh, that would be fantastic. And again, Kim will be there to uh, answer any questions you have. And I'm grateful for those of you that have served in the past in so many different ways. So as we wrap this up, absolutely, people can disappoint us. But again, God also works through people to teach us and to help us. And the Apostle Paul, again, writing to the Philippian church, he says, the things that you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. What is that next small step for God that you need to make? Even with your disappointment, maybe it's just that first small step is simply trusting him to say, you know, God, you know, I've, I've kind of ignored you. I've been upset with you, and I'm sorry. So I, I'm beginning to believe again. Maybe it's just that small step. Maybe it's the step of saying, Jesus, I do believe that you died on the cross for my sins and rose again. I ask you to forgive me and come into my life. Now that might seem like a small step, but man, that's huge. Makes such a difference in your life. Christ will respond to that. He longs to enter your life. He longs to be in relationship with you. And he doesn't want the disappointments that you've gone to through in life to be an excuse to shove him away. He wants to walk with you through those disappointments of life. In fact, as we think about those great people who followed God in the Bible, listen to these names, and I want you to know as I read these names, every single one of them became disappointed with God at some point in their journey. Abraham, Joseph, Moses, David, Jeremiah, John the Baptist, the 12 disciples, including Peter. Now Judas Iscariot got disappointed with God, and unfortunately Judas took the path that I cautioned that we ought not. In his disappointment with Jesus, he chose his own appointment. He went his own way, he didn't trust God, he followed his own agenda, and he suffered the consequences of it. But the other disciples, and even in their disappointment and not understanding what was happening with Jesus and all that they went through, they trusted him, and they received the reward. And then, even Jesus himself, as he hung on the cross, he experienced in his humanity a form of disappointment when he cried out, My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? That's a cry of disappointment. And yet, you see, that's not where it ended. Because the last words that Jesus cried out from the cross, teaching us something about disappointment, even when we're disappointed with God, after he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He then later cried, into your hands I commit my spirit. You see, Jesus was modeling for us a trust of God even when we're disappointed. And you know, you know the rest of the story. God honored that faith. And on the third day, Christ was raised from the grave. He came back to life and he is glorified forevermore, forevermore, forevermore. You can put your trust in Christ. And even in the disappointments of life, he will get you through it. 1 Corinthians 1.9 says this, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Would you stand? Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity today to look into your word and to be reminded of the help that you offer us through our disappointments. And I just trust that you use this message in whatever way you want with each of us individually, Lord. You know the things that each of us are going through right now. Lord, you know in my life, even right now, some of the disappointments that, that uh, I'm experiencing. And yet, Lord, I am so grateful because I trust you. With the disappointments that I go through, that we go through, 
Lord, we know that you will see us through. So help us, Lord, to keep our faith in you and help us to look for those appointments that you're placing around us and before us, both to receive help in the midst of our disappointment, but also to give us opportunity to serve and to help others who are going through times of disappointment. So help us in these moments now, again, to take that first step, to trust you, to follow you, and, and to keep on uh, obeying you in the areas of our life, in every area of our life, because that's what we need to do in your name. Amen. As we see.